Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about mania and hypomania. Hey, what's going on, good people? It's your boy, James Harris. Appreciate you for tuning in time after time. Um, I'm the founder of a movement called Mental Heal, which focuses on men's overall wellness, that mental health as well as that physical health. And I'm also the author of a book called Man, Just Express Yourself. Definitely appreciate everybody who went out to get that support. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, of course, my fellow therapists who got this in their lobby or use it in the session for conversation starters. My parents who use this as a tool with their teens. Appreciate that. And of course, all those partners out there who are doing this um, different exercises on a, a date night or challenging your partner to reveal more of himself. I definitely appreciate that. You definitely, um, if you're interested in getting that, you definitely can, of course, go to my website, mentoheal.com, M-E-N-T-O-H-E-A-L.com, or you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, pretty much everywhere books are sold. Um, continue to check in. I definitely appreciate you. Continue this growth journey that we're on. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe. Um, so somebody submitted a question. Can I be both anxious and depressed? Um, yes, there's some overlap there that we can discuss. I'll definitely be sure to do a segment on that, but, um, some anxiety features can be seen in major depression and some of those things, uh, oftentimes they, you know, coexist within each other. So you definitely can have both. Um, again, I'll break down another segment uh, pertaining to that, um, so it'll be beneficial to you. Um, so when we're talking about mania, hypomania, it's pretty much periods where a person feel um, elevated, very active, um, oftentimes full of energy. Hypomania is like a milder form of mania, I guess we can say in some cases, um, but that's often linked to like depression and stuff like that. Mania is a se severe episode that may last a week or more. You know, a person can feel uncontrollably, like, elevated, that move, very high energy. These symptoms can interfere with their daily life. Um, in severe cases, of course, a person can be hospitalized just because of that mania. They're making uh, reckless decisions. They're doing different things that they wouldn't typically do, uh, whether that's splurging, whether that's gambling, whether that's substance use. Um, it's so many different things. So hypomania is an episode that lasts... Uh, a few days, probably up to five days in some cases. People may feel very uh, good, like they're functioning well, um, but their family and friends may notice too that the difference in their mood and the activity potentially change throughout that day-to-day -day session um, with their interaction. You know, So while a person may not be hypomanic, they may have some symptoms that'll be uh, recognized by the family, friends, coworkers, or peers, and stuff like that. And also, when we're talking about mania, hypomania, um, it's often related to, you know, bipolar disorder. Um, a lot of people also associated with uh, schizo schizoaffective disorder as well um, because the moods, you know, differentiate um, in, in so many different cases within those two diagnoses. People who have bipolar 1, of course, experience mania, while people who have bipolar 2 disorder experience hypomania. Um, again, like... The splurging, the spending, the reckless behavior, uh, being promiscuous, going out, you know, just being on 10. Like, oh, man, this person's always hype. That could be a manic episode. Um, and, of course, some symptoms of mania so you'll be able to recognize it or so you can process like, oh, man, did I just witness somebody in a manic episode or was I in a manic episode? Uh, mania, mania goes beyond the normal mood energy change. Like, we as humans, of course, our mood levels change, our energy change. Um, sometimes we're excited, sometimes we're overly excited. But when we're talking about mania, we're talking about having, um, you know, you, that, that feeling happy. Mania, mania calls pretty much a euphoric feeling um, that can be extremely irritable, like to not only you, but of course the people around you. Uncontrollably excitement, uh, feeling very happy, elevated, um, irritable, and, and agitated over small stuff. Like, that's the main thing. Like, of course, you can have a good mood, but when a person starts to be, like, irritable over everything, those things can be uh, a hindrances in building relationships or around the office and stuff like that. Um, high energy levels that the person finds hard to control, like, just always on the go. Like, yo, what is going on? Like, what happened? 
um, high active levels such as excessive running, being fidgety, moving around and stuff like that. And of course, some people um, look at adults and tend to say, oh, they got adult ADHD. But sometimes they overlook the fact that it could be a manic episode. Um, difficulty paying attention and focusing, unrealistic high self-esteem, feeling overly confident, lack of social um, inhibitions, like they, you know, poor social cues, like as far as closing the distance, as far as relaxing with other people, you know, you're just always on the go and people trying to chill. Uh, many people can also have racing thoughts, which we also can see in uh, anxiety and stuff like that. Less need for sleep. Uh, staying up for multiple hours throughout the night, not being able to uh, stay asleep consistently or, or poor with falling asleep at a decent time. You know, they, these people tend to take risks, reckless activities, you know, bungee jumping and race car racing, just randomly just doing stuff. Um, and in some cases, people with mania can also have thoughts of suicide or, or you know, some self-harm features. Um, and or they might even want to self -harm, harm somebody else. So pay attention to those people who may be experiencing a manic episode. Um, people can experience a psychotic symptom during this manic episode as well. So that's important to pay attention to because sometimes the lack of sleep, the reckless behavior could have been substance use. People tend to also hallucinate um, or start hallucinate can be, you know, both those things, auditory or the visual hallucinations during this manic episode. So just pay attention to people. Um, and of course, like I said, they probably added a substance to it as well. And they can also have delusions, whether it's grandiose ideas or belief that, you know, they're invincible, they're powerful, they're famous, just all over the place due to them being in that manic episode. So definitely pay attention to your loved ones or take notes for yourself. Um, this is not to describe to uh, diagnose anybody. Just pay attention to it. Do your own research. You know, I'm just bringing you these ideas of what people message me. Um, so I'm just like the vessel, the messenger or something like that. Um, and I also treat clients with these um, symptoms and things like that. So I guess the information can be valid. Um, so when we're talking about hypomania, we're talking about, you know, having a higher, happier mood than usual. Um, of course, these people can be irritable as well as have rude behavior. These people tend to also feel confident, you know, so it is some similarities and overlaps there. Um, higher activity of energy levels that can um, pretty much go on for a couple of days again, like we said at the beginning. Powerful feeling and physical uh, mental well-being. You know, ha having hypomania is pretty much um, can be more sociable and talkative than they usually are. Um, having a stronger desire for sex than they usually have. So that's something to pay attention to, too, if you have a change in your desires for sexual gratification. Uh, feeling the need to sleep um, less than usual. Again, that's another overlap. So, uh, you know, it's, it's some common areas in there, but there's also some differences in there. Um, hypomania and mania share so many different symptoms. Um, both mania and hypomania involve mood change behavior beyond normal uh, like more than the, the, again, everyday changes that you probably see a coworker, your peer, or your partner make um, in, in some cases. Mania is so severe that person cannot carry on their usual activity. People experiencing mania but not hypomania may also have, again, delusions, uh, hallucinations, and just pretty much that stooped or mood overall. And uh, when we're talking about the similarities, you know, these symptoms of both mania, hypomania involve feeling very happy. They have that uh, emotional high, I guess you can say, feeling more energetic and creative, like masterpieces just flowing um, because they just own 10. Like they, they want to want to express it. They want to get it out. Um, and sometimes getting it out is in a reckless way or in a creative way. Mania or hypomania can be fixed um, can be mixed again with, again, like depression, um, bipolar, schizophrenia, and stuff like that. person may feel energized and while also feeling depressed and hopeless and sometimes empty. Um, and those are some of the things uh, that, that can overlap within hypomania and mania. Um, again, major depressive disorder, bipolar 1, bipolar 2, schizophrenia, um, or the, the schizoids, you know, those areas when we're talking about mania, hypomania. 
uh, triggers may triggers of mania and hypomania. Of course, you can you can fall in love, um, use recreational drugs, uh, especially those ones with you know they can those stimulant drugs. You know, people tend to gravitate to those when they are in a manic or hypomanic episode. Um, starting creative new projects, um, oftentimes don't finish them. Uh, start partying late. You know, just again always on the go, taking random vacations. Uh, going to Vegas and like gambling, blowing money that they're supposed to use for bills and stuff like that. Uh, listen to loud music, just being reckless, driving on the highway. Um, you know, different mood stabilizers and stuff like that can be used to prevent uh, these things. Either either one of them. Um, I know some uh, of my psychiatrist friends they prescribe um, some clients with lithium, and then a couple other. Um, um, prescription drugs. Um, second generation of, of course, antipsychotics, which treat the mania and hypo hypomania. Um, antidepressants pretty much work as well. Because um, some people, again, they have that depressive episode or that bipolar episode in these cases. So they need to treat those, you know, those uh, down periods when those dopamines tend to settle. So sleep medication can also be helpful because Again, people tend to not fall asleep at a decent time or they can't sleep, stay asleep throughout the night. So they def definitely have difficulty falling and staying asleep. So those things are important. Um, and of course, psychotherapy, talk therapy, come holler at me. We can, we can figure this thing out. We can find the root of this mania. We can try to prevent and treat this mania as well um, or try to identify some significant changes in your life to where you know, wh wh why are you here or where you are now? And of course, if you eat a healthy diet to avoid skipping meals, those things can, proper nutrition can definitely uh, play a part in the decrease of certain functions within your brain. Practice good sleep hygiene, of course. Um, and I, I would suggest keeping a journal of your mood changes. Um, and, and some I do within session, and I'm sure a couple other therapists do it in sessions as well, is have mood charts on hand so we can regulate how you felt, you know, this week or the last week and stuff like that. It definitely can help you spot the manic episode or the hypomanic episode. And we can see like, oh man, all right, cool. You skipped that day, you skipped this week. Let's do something different this week because potentially based on these previous uh, mood charts or the graphs, it looks like it's about to come. Um, and again, that's beneficial to us as therapists, but also to you as a client. Um, attend your appointments regularly, whether it's with the therapist or the psychiatrist, so they can uh, adjust your meds as needed um, and make sure you take them as well as prescribed it. So definitely get the help you, you can so you can stay away from not only self-harming, but of course harming others um, within that manic or the hypomanic episode. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Have you ever witnessed somebody or experienced mania or hypomania yourself? Leave me a comment. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Definitely appreciate you for checking in. Uh, thank you. Submit me your questions. Let me know what you want me to cover next.